Good day, everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the early nurse theorists, specifically Nightingale, Henderson, Wiedenbach, Hall, Peplau, Orlando, and Travelby. This is the source of information for this lecture. Let's start with Florence Nightingale and the early nursing philosophies. As we've discussed before and is evident in all of your readings, Florence Nightingale really had a very pivotal role in the development of modern nursing. For those of you who were in class on Thursday, as we discussed, she was the daughter of a very affluent and educated family. She had a very interesting background. I did find a big, thick book about the Nightingales in an antiquarian bookstore. And I started reading it. It was even more fascinating about her life because it, the book went back two, three, and four generations. And she had a history of a family who were affluent, well-educated, and sort of worked against the norm. They were um, social reformers, if you will, and didn't fit between the traditional British party lines. Her grandfather on one side of the family was uh, an acquaintance and, and strong friend in the House of Commons with Wilberforce, who was responsible for ending the British slave trade. So you can see that this family had a very strong sense of social justice and social reform uh, early on. Um, Mr. Nightingale uh, had no sons, and at that time, time in British history, property did not go from father to daughter, it went from father to son, so daughters were really raised to marry well and raise more sons. Um, daughters typically weren't educated beyond the um, sewing and how to have tea and how to play the piano kind of thing. Um, she had full access to her father's vast library, was fluent in a number of languages, was educated in science and mathematics and economics, and all these things really prepared her for the role that she was destined to play. She turned down a very prominent marriage offer, which her family had a very difficult time understanding, and they had a further time uh, understanding her choice of profession. At the time, uh, nurses were women of low birth and ill repute. It was not a respected profession at all, and the fact that she wanted to be a nurse just really horrified her family. I hope you get on uh, PAL and explore the number of interesting um, sites on Florence Nightingale. She really felt like disease was a reparative process, and, and think of the word repair, that you know someone could repair themselves from something, and that the nurse had a real opportunity to manipulate the environment to facilitate this process. If you recall, when she got over uh, to the uh, Crimean War effort, and started inspecting the conditions, there, the British Army was losing more men through uh, disease than through battle injury. And she found dead animals clogging water sources and uh, all kinds of disgusting kind of uh, environmental situations. Um, remember as well that she used her influence in a very positive way. Her family was socially and politically extremely well connected. She knew the right people to call. She knew the buttons to push. And she took advantage of those social connections. So it was really she, t she used her intellect and her uh, influence in a very um, powerful way. Um, the next woman that we're going to speak of, and, and these are all women at the time nursing uh, was predominantly a 
female profession, profession so many of the earth, early nursing philosophies and theorists are all from women. Uh, Virginia Henderson uh, died not too, too long ago, but she had a 60-year history of nursing service, both as a nurse, a teacher, an author, and a researcher. She is a classic definition of nursing as the um, nurse helping the person uh, what they cannot or do not know to do themselves. And so it's very much a facilitating relationship kind of philosophy. The Sigma Theta Tau, the Nursing Honor Society's nursing library, is named after her. And I would encourage you to log on to the Sigma Theta Tau website. You don't need um, a membership to access most of their information. And um, you get along and poke around the library. I think you'll find it quite fascinating. Ernestine Wiedenbach uh, had a philosophy, again, uh, this helping art um, kind of philosophy. Uh, she had hospital and public health positions, as well as a, a quite a celebrated academic career in maternal child health at Yale University. She considered the patient's need for help as the whole basis of her philosophy of nursing. The patient's behavior was compared with the nurse's expectations. The nurse explored the meaning of the patient's behavior. The nurse determined the cause of the patient's discomfort or incapacity. And the nurse determined if the patient can um, resolve his problem or has a need for help. And you can see the very systematic um, kind of process that's involved here, very similar to the nursing process. It's very orderly. And again, you have to remember that these early nursing theorists were trying to establish nursing as a distinct and separate profession for medicine. It wasn't an offshoot of medicine. It wasn't a second tier of medicine. It was a separate, complementary, granted, uh, discipline, but very different from uh, the practice of medicine. Every uh, nursing theorist kind of falls under the nursing meta paradigm. Again, that's the very broadest umbrella, kind of over um, hanging of um, how one organizes theoretical concepts in nursing. And the four components are nursing, person, health, and environment. So if you can think about, I know we discussed this in class on Thursday, you know, everyone looks up at the clouds and sees different shapes. Some people see a flower, some people see a rabbit, some people see a car. Um, this is this theorist's way of looking at the nursing meta paradigm. So Wiedenbach says that the rationale for nursing is that the patient needs help. And you can see that the, um, the elements of how she sees a person, that each person has resources, the human strives for self-direction and independence, Self-awareness is necessary for integrity, and whatever the individual does represents his best judgment at the moment. She really didn't have a specific definition about health, but again, this nursing patient need for help kind of concept and those interrelationships with those concepts implied a very health-related concern. She also didn't really have a specific definition for environment, but she talked about the purpose of nursing as overcoming obstacles uh, in the person's environment, so it was kind of implied. She had a very, very strong impact on nursing education. She felt, again, she was ahead of her time, felt that the um, BSN level was the academic and clinical uh, basis for preparation as a nurse. And she also really was a champion for graduate studies in nursing. Her clinical expertise had to do primarily with maternal child 
health, and she was a very early advocate of a lot of things that we take for granted today, natural childbirth, uh, Lamaze instruction, father participation, um, rooming in. These were all kind of ahead of her time kind of thoughts. Lydia Hall has a very uh, simple um, framework called The Care, The Cure, and The Core. Her clinical background was in rehabilitation, and she was interested, influential, excuse me, in establishing a large rehab center in uh, the state of New York. Again, she was interested in rehab, the chronically ill, the long-term care, and she had a public health background. And her theoretical assumptions were that nursing was a professional, very interpersonal process. If you think about the whole long-term care, chronically ill rehab process, very much is involved with relationships and coaching someone to be better than they can be. She had three, ba this essentially was her, her um, theoretical model. Um, it's very different when we get to Leininger's uh, Sunrise model. You can see it's much more complex. Uh, Lydia Hall's was really very simple. And um, it is three overlapping circles with an emphasis on each circle being independent, but that there was a clear overlap um, and interaction between the concepts. Um, the core she called the person. This was really the very therapeutic aspects of nursing, um, that whole therapeutic use of self and the nurse bringing her, her strengths and um, lending those strengths to the patient. It was very frame, very much based in the social uh, sciences. Um, you think about philosophy and religion and um, you know psychology. The care, she talked about the body. This was very natural and biological in nature. Um, she felt like the intimate body care of a person was very much the domain of nursing. And um, she was very adamant about that, being unique to nursing. Um, the cure, she t talked about more the therapeutic and pathological science and helping the patient and the family through the medical aspects of um, care. She drew heavily from the schools of philosophy and psychology. She was a large proponent of Carl Rogers and his client centered in therapy. She borrowed um, many major premises from these schools of thought. Uh, again, think back to her rehab focus and that she was about helping patients re achieve their maximum potential. She was also um, very much uh, a proponent of the learning process and studied uh, John Dewey's learning theory, as well as Harry Stack Sullivan. We will learn later that um, Peplau was also a pupil of Harry Stack Sullivan. So a lot of these theorists um, had impact by similar um, mentors. Client-centered therapy patients change when the following occurs. The patient accepts himself more fully, becomes more confident and self-directing, changes maladaptive behaviors, and the person becomes more open to what's going inside and outside, more reflective. So you can see that this very much fits within the rehab circles. Again, this is uh, Lydia Hall's view of the nursing meta paradigm. She was adamant that nursing can and should be very professional, um, that nursing expertise centers around the body, that intimate care. Um, she felt like patients could achieve a maximum potential through learning. And so she was very much about teaching and coaching as um, the nursing interventions. People behave on the basis of feelings, known and unknown, and learning results in changed behavior. She felt like becoming ill was behavior, 
and that healing can be hastened if people become more self-aware. And so she's very big on uh, self-reflection. She was very much a, um, a oppositional of team nursing. She felt like that took away from the beauty and impact of the professional nurse. She felt very strongly that any career that is divided about the work that has to be done and how it is to be done is a trade and hence not a profession. Hildegard Peplau was known uh, for psychodynamic nursing. She was considered kind of the mother of modern psychiatric nursing. She worked at Bellevue and White Psychiatric Facilities. Again, these were very large New York, almost warehouse kinds of, of um, facilities where people were institutionalized for decades. And she was very bothered by that and, and really wanted a more interpersonal and interrelational role for the psychiatric nurse. She developed and chaired the graduate psych program at Rutgers University in uh, New York. And she again drew from uh, behavioral science, psychology, and, psycholo and psychiatry. Um, so she had a very eclectic approach uh, and drew on a variety of these theorists. Um, and again, you will see common themes of um, Again, Harry Stack Sullivan and uh, Bertolanffy with general systems theory. And of course, with Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, similar themes that you all are familiar with. Uh, Peplau was very prominent in the American Nursing Association and a consultant to the National Institute of Mental Health, very well-regarded nurse. Um, she had theory assumptions as the phases of the nurse-patient relationship. Again, very um, reminiscent of the nursing process. Um, she felt like these were overlapping phases that um, the nurse worked through with the client. This is a lovely picture of her with her nursing cap and uh, uniform. A later picture of her in her teaching role. She had some very clear ideas of, of the role of the nurse. Most of those are, are pretty self-explanatory. The one that may give you a little curiosity is the role of the stranger. She felt very strongly, and again, this hallmarks in some of the later caring theories with um, Jean Watson and... and um, uh, Duffy, that the nurse should be extraordinarily polite, respectful, um, courteous, treat the patient like you would a stranger, that someone you're first meeting and not someone that's warehoused. And again, you know, you, you have to understand where she came from and where she practiced. You know, patients were very much warehoused, institutionalized, and there was no courtesy and, and basic human respect. And so she was very much a proponent of that uh, behavior for the professional nurse. Um, she felt that nursing was significant, therapeutic, and interpersonal process. Um, and again, that interpersonal theme will pop up and again and again in some of the later theorists. She felt man was an organism that lived in an unstable equilibrium. And that uh, health was a word symbol that implied a forward movement of personality. And very much, you know, reminiscent of what Lydia Hall believed is that people had a maximum potential. Peplow talked about the creative constructive, productive, personal, and community living. So she's very much about patients being in, um, engaged in their life. Um, Peplau defined the environment in terms of existing forces outside the organism and in the context of culture. 
Orlando, Ida Jean Orlando, she later married, so the, uh, the, her ma- her married name kind of pops up, but she is most widely known as uh, Ida Jean Orlando. She has a nursing process theory. Uh, she was actually one of the first nursing leaders to emphasize the elements of the nursing process. And again, very much a focus on this reciprocal relationship between nurse and patient. So you'll see that again and again in these early nursing theorists, uh, moving away from the nurse in the 30s and 40s being just a, uh, carrying out doctor's orders and being more a task kind of oriented um, practitioner to one that really develops a relationship, a healing therapeutic relationship with a, a patient and that um, relationship being part of the um, process of being well. She had a very celebrated career at Yale University and um, she her first book was again about this relationship the dynamic nurse patient relationship she also had a background in mental health and was very instrumental in integrating mental health into the basic nursing curriculum she never really had in uh, clearly defined theory ups- assumptions they were more implicit and she had uh, five kind of interrelated major concepts about very much the professional nurse and that relationship interacting with the client and being influenced and influencing the behavior of the client that impacted the the response of the nurse that started the nursing process in a very orderly and systematic scientific way generating improvements that fostered again that role of the professional nurse. She, um, as well as many of the early nursing theorists, saw nursing as a distinct profession with autonomous functions. And again, these women were way ahead of their time. Uh, The nurse meets and finds the patient's need for help, and the nurse should relieve uh, discomfort and not add to the patient's distress. Uh, people behave both both verbally and non-verbally, and again, that goes harkens back to her psychiatric background. And um, again, you'll see this theme in some of the later theorists that each person is unique and individual. I think that really gets to the honoring and the respect of of uh, different um, people for who they are and what they are. She had no specific definition of health um, that, but the theory kind of presumed that uh, health was freedom from discomfort and the um, feeling of, of adequacy and well-being that contributed to health. She also did not define environment and assumed that there was a, whenever there was a nurse patient contact that that constituted a nursing situation. Um, many theorists have used Orlando's uh, this need for help um, concept uh, in studying uh, different kinds of, of clinical questions, um, grieving spouses, uh, stress reduction, and post-operative uh, vomiting. So you can see her theory has some broad uh, implications. So again, you know, it's very much the need for help the nurse's ability to meet that need and that interaction influencing patient outcomes. Joyce Travelby uh, was actually a student of Ida Jean Orlando at Yale. Uh, she died very young. It would have been fascinating to see uh, what she could have done with her theory if she had lived. The um, Information around her death is is rather sketchy. No one, I, I am unable to find actually what she died from. But um, she was a psychiatric nurse. She had an academic career, and she had a human to human relationship model. Um, her book, and I see a little typo here, so I apologize about that. Um, 
Her first book was in 1966, not 966, and she uh, did a second edition in 1971, and then unfortunately she died, so we are robbed of, of updates from her, but she felt Again, this this call away from um, technology. This was a, a decade or two after uh, some of the earlier theorists, um, Peplau and Orlando. And if you think what was becoming very popular in medicine in the mid to early 60s was technology, the defibrillators, the the ICUs, the the bells and whistles of of technology, and she was very much. Um, tugging, if you will, the other way to say, wait a minute here, there's a person attached to that machine. And she very much felt like nurse had needed a humanistic revolution, a return to the caring function of the nurse, caring for and caring about. And you can see, you know, decades later, the plethora of caring uh, philosophies and, and theories that have predominated uh, nursing uh, very much um I'm sure, harken back to Travel B and her early work. Um, she helped the patient avoid and alleviate stress from uh, unmet needs. And she was very much a, um, a student of Viktor Frankl. I will put the uh, TED Talk link on um, PAL for you. Um, as we talked about in class, uh, Frankl, Viktor Frankl, uh, was a neurologist and a psychologist. So again, he was a very educated man. He also happened to be an Austrian Jew. And uh, his entire family, short of him, uh, were um, did not survive the horrors of the Nazi concentration camp at Auschwitz. And he looked, you know, being an educated man, he looked at, why some people survived that horrid experience and why some people just couldn't. And he found that the people survived found meaning and purpose in every moment, even in suffering and death. And so Travel B very much drew heavily on Frankel and his work. If, um, if you have ever a moment um, it's not a very weighty book. It's a small little book, but Man's Search for Meaning, written by Dr. Frankel in 1946, is considered a classic. Um, Travel B's definition of nursing is um, a human, or that whole nursing relationship. So human being is defined as a unique, irreplaceable individual, a one-time being in this world, like yet unlike any person who has ever lived or ever will live. So again, she was getting at that that respect for that person's cultural, religious, um, spiritual uh, backgrounds and what they brought to the table. She felt like, um, again, this interpersonal theme, um, a, nursing was a process um, that the... Um, nurse assisted the individual family or community so she had a very broad scope very much similar to Duffy in her theory talking about caring for patients caring for each other caring for institutions caring for our community so she had a very broad view of what the nurse was capable of um, in prevention or coping with suffering she defined the human being as a continuous process, becoming, evolving, changing. And again, that's a very humanistic kind of Maslow-like um, um, philosophy. You can see that she very much drew from Maslow's hierarchy of needs and that move towards self-actualization. She defined health as subjective and objective. Um, subjective involved the self-appraisal of the physical, emotional, spiritual status, and objective was more concerned with discernible disease, disability, or defect. She had no specific um, definition of environment, 
but to find the human condition and life experiences as suffering, hope, pain, and illness. So that kind of implied environment. So these, again, are the um, phenomenal, forward-thinking women who shaped our profession. I hope you get on PAL and learn a little bit more about each one of them. They had significant contributions to our profession, and uh, I hope we all appreciate their lifelong work. Good day.